All right, everybody, Baron here. So welcome back to Star Wars Battlefront 2 Starfighter Assault. Oh my gosh. Now, for the record, I am, uh, I think I'm going on 36 hours with no sleep. Jet lag has been hitting me hard in Germany. Yes, I'm in Cologne or Kulna, Germany. And what we're going to be seeing here is, is look at, look at that beautiful, look at that beautiful booty right there. That is a TIE bomber, a twin ion engine bomber. Now, the bomber in this mode is pretty powerful because it's got some pretty good locking abilities with regards to like the ordnance it can fire out. It's got these cluster missiles and it's got these twin proton torpedoes. Now, all six classes of ships, all three Rebels and all three Imperial uh, base starfighters, all had the option of firing a lock-on missile of some sort. So, one of the key things that I noticed was, was if you could find a skill and you could get good reliably at evading enemy missiles, lock-on missiles, you're gonna be in a very good position. But I just gotta say, just look around and, and listen to what's going on. This is an objective-based starfighter assault mode, right? So I think it was 10v10 or 12v12. I'm not really certain with regards to the exact numbers. And then there were bots fighting as well. And look at this, you can fly through the ship. Oh my God, when I realized that, I was just like, holy crap. I played this game mode twice and I didn't know you could fly through the ship because I was just so overwhelmed. And so just kind of like taken aback by everything. But this is arguably what you're gonna see is my best gameplay of the day. And that's because we jumped into Darth Maul's scimitar later and good lord does it have some special abilities but in the lower right you're gonna see three different abilities right now i'm firing my cluster missiles and i fired too close while I locked onto this y-wing and you'll notice that with my tie bomber i only have one blaster one laser basically oh my god how did we not collide i don't know but we didn't and look at this i love i love just the station in the background and my my upgrades in the background when you're wondering like why am i still alive there was a hull upgrade that i opted for that gave me 40 percent extra hull boost so that kept me alive in certain situations like this because the tie bomber is just not a very maneuverable ship however it's packing the pain when it comes to missiles man so we got we got ourselves knocked out by an a-wing right there look at that 958 points and we need a thousand points a thousand points before we can unlock a hero vehicle now what's going on is we have to protect these two little cruisers and you can see that one to my left is very very damaged and you can hear the lady the officer in the background basically telling us what to do you know and it wasn't I'll be honest guys it wasn't look at that here's a missile lock coming in however I have an ability my L1 ability breaks missile locks it's really, really nice, but you saw that, you know, you can still get... Look at that. That was Black 1. That's Poe Dameron right there. But you know what? I was like, you know what, Poe? I got a 1,000 points. I'm going to come out there. Oh, but the scimitar's not available. Oh, but it is, boys. Oh, but it is. Okay, so look at this. Now, I think the first time we all saw the scimitar was in um, Jaja Binkus episode, right? And I never really thought of this as a fighter but when you look at it it does look pretty sleek the time has come. oh my god you, you gotta love darth maul's voice man so we've got we've got uh we've got a proton torpedo ability i'm not entirely sure what my l1 ability was i got so excited i just saw that it was available it's it's everybody wants to play the heroes right now that's one of the cool things is in star wars battlefront 2 relative to battlefront 1 is everybody can be the heroes, but it's performance based. Oh, that's right, guys. I just cloaked. I just did a cloak. Someone's locking onto you a missile or like, you know, hitting you with their lasers. Look at how fast I can fire. Now, I will admit that I, I am not a uh, console uh, player. I'm a PC player and I'm pretty good at flying aircraft in games anyway using a mouse and keyboard the controls like you can see that i'm not a hundred percent comfortable and i was still trying to get used to the controls now there was different ways to customize them 
So there's multiple ways, well, yeah, that was a bit redundant, but there are multiple ways to customize your controls to kind of fit your style. My approach was I'm just going to get in the game and, you know, chomp through a few bad games and then finally get the hang of it and just rock with it. And I'm still, I would say I'm still pretty rusty. However, in terms of flying smooth, not really there. Every now and then I'll, I'll, I'll like, I'll forget if I'm inverted or not. I don't know. It, it sounds dumb, but it's, I'll be honest. That's just kind of what happened. That's kind of what I was doing. So here's the Millennium Falcon. And um, I'm, I'm very wary. I do not want to lose my hero ship to running into a friendly. Right? So I'm very, very cautious. I, I use this cloaking ability quite a bit. But it really is one of the strengths of the ship. Now, from what I heard... Some of the developers and some of the people that were more familiar with the making of the game and with the game mode, they were saying that right when Darth Maul gets out of that cloak, that's when he's the most vulnerable, however, like in terms of health, but that's also when he is some of the most potent. Now, I overheard that in conversation, so I don't have any specifics, but it's an interesting theory that I'm looking forward to testing when I can finally get my hands on this and I can dive in deep. Man, I gotta say that I I have I have been chasing Star Wars Battlefront for so long. Oh man, I love the Dark Maul voice. It's just so cryptic and you know like eerie. It's great. I'm like I'm not gonna crash my freaking scimitar into the insides of this capital ship. So I cloak, get out, do my thing. But yeah, I I try to like I'm in Gamescom for as an EA game changer. I had been hunting that. I had been trying to get that for a long time, specifically to try to be involved with Star Wars Battlefront, the first one, years ago now. So to be here in Germany playing these and being able to share that with you is just something that... <laughs> it's just something that, like, it's it's kind of a surreal moment, and I'm very, very excited about it. Look at that. That's, that's when I realized, hey, I can suffer a collision. But I probably shouldn't do that. I, I was trying to get a feel for my fire. Power. But overall impressions of this mode is, um, for me, I got to get a little better with controls. I'm very, very excited to play it on PC. Um, but there was definitely many ways to customize it on console. You, but you can you can tell by my flying that like I kind of have. I'm like I'm like at a B. B minus level of flying, eh, B minus level of flying, but since it's kind of like an objective based game mode, you know, someone like me who's kind of more of a poacher when it comes to uh, dogfighting, um, that's my style, right, you know, come out of the sun and ambush them kind of a thing, right, there you go, but there's plenty of AI targets to go for as well as human targets, which is what gives this whole atmosphere, this huge big atmosphere going on, huge big atmosphere, do you hear that? The dubstep, dude, that is uh, Slave One's, what is it? I forget what it's called, Seismic, Seismic Proton, it's something, you know, it, he used it in episode two, it was awesome. Ooh, that bomber, can you see how close I got to that? That's tunnel vision right there, man. But yes, this game looks fun. And what was interesting is we always dealing with temporary builds. Um, and this one kind of favors the Empire. But what was fun was we started out with the Empire and then we switched. So we did like maybe five or six rounds with the Empire and then five or six with the Rebels. But our team got our butts kicked as Rebels the first couple rounds. But then we eventually figured out how to win. And it was really cool to be the only, you know, like... We only were the only ones who got to experience what it was like to attain a rebel victory, at least in the people that are in this game right now. It was really fun. It was really fun. And it was definitely an accomplishment. But the whole objective going on right now in the Fondor shipyards is that the rebels are trying to... Look at that. There's a Mon Cal cruiser in the background. The rebels are trying to destroy this Star Destroyer that's being constructed. Pretty cool. I mean, why, why fight it? Look at that. See, even though I'm cloaked, they can still hit me. If And you can you can make out the cloaked fighter. It's not totally invincible. It's just, look at that. Slave one chasing the Millennium Falcon. Me, derp flying around. You know, a 
Oh, man. The audio and visual components of this game are great. They were great in Star Wars Battlefront 1. And what I'm loving about Star Wars Battlefront 2 is now the gameplay is starting to feel deeper and beefier and something that I can dump a lot of time into. As opposed to Star Wars Battlefront 1, which just completely gave me chills and completely put me in awe. But then after probably, you know, a month, I was like, eh, you know, there's other games to play. But ladies and gentlemen, I've got more. Excellent work. Their assault has failed. We did it. That's what's up. All right. So look at that. 16 and 2, not bad. But I've got a lot more footage. So if there's anything in particular you want, I, I've got a lot of pretty good Thai bomber gameplay. I've got a, a few episodes of the Rebel Victory where I'm flying an A-Wing and I'm playing an objective. So my KD ratio is bad. But I was going all objective based because I just wanted to see what a rebel victory on the Fondor shipyards looked like. Um, I got a little bit of footage of Poe Dameron's X-Wing. I only got to play the Scimitar and Poe Dameron's X-Wing as the hero vehicles. Did not get to play Slave One or the Millennium Falcon. Um, but, you know, the Scimitar and Poe Dameron were the new ones. So I had to prioritize with limited time. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brand. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what else you'd like to see in Star Wars Battlefront 2, and I will see you guys in the next episode.